<laughs> you stupid ghost. Thought you could get revenge on me? Do you know who I am? I'm William Afton. I always come back. I am Golden Barney. <laughs> I'm about to end this man's whole career. <laughs> oh, ah, ah. Internet, welcome to Game Theory, the wet springlock suit clamping down on your subscription feeds. And oh my gosh, guys, finally, after all that waiting, after being patient for so long, after all the delays, it has finally arrived. It is here. A brand new Freddy game just released where we finally get to go up against Vanny the Killer Bunny. Here it is, Security Breach. Furries. Rage. Didn't know it had a subtitle. Apparently it's about an onslaught of angry furries on the attack. Oh, oh wait, sorry. Misread that title. It's a fury. F Fury's rage. Very important distinction there. Well, anyway, let's fire this puppy up. Let's see if they're ready for Freddy. I'm so good looking. Not quite what I expected on multiple fronts. A game-long apology for all the delays with the real security breach. They're gonna kill me. They're gonna kill me when they find out that I have to delay the game again. What am I gonna do? You can tell that Scott's feeling a little guilty these days, huh? Also, apparently he sleeps in a fairy tale bed. Learned a lot about you with this one, Scott. Anyway, just because the official game is still TBD doesn't mean that there's any less to theorize about. We've got a new book, we've got secret bosses, and we've got a lot of pent-up theories behind the floodgates just waiting to pour out. So today, I'm doing another roundup of short FNAF theories. Some looking back to the past, some looking ahead towards the future, and some that are so out there that, well, you're gonna see when we get there. So open your minds, your hearts, and your hollow animatronic chest cavities reserved for the bodies of dead children because I'm shoving theories in everywhere. Theory number one, we definitely play as Michael Afton in FNAF 3. In the newest Fazbear Fright book, Gumdrop Angel, released at the beginning of May, we as always have our three main horror novellas. The first is the title feature, Gumdrop Angel, a tragic tale about a girl who transforms into a giant gummy bear pinata thing that gets eaten alive by a swarm of saliva mouth kids at a Freddy's birthday party. Talk about your hygiene concerns. This one became a whole heck of a lot scarier reading it in the aftermath of a global pandemic. But as you might imagine, not a whole lot of lore to be found in a story about a sentient gummy bear. Our second story, Sergio's Lucky Day, is all about Balloon Boy, or should I say Lucky Boy, a doll who's wearing a propeller hat and holding both a balloon and a sign that says, I'm a lucky boy. In this story, our main character Sergio finds the doll and ends up buying a lottery ticket because of its advice. The next day, Sergio finds that he won himself $600,000. I won a lottery! That's great. It's a story that's a bit confusing because the doll does seem to offer good advice, encouraging Sergio to leave a job that he hates, leave a girlfriend that he hates, upgrade his life in small ways, all things that improve Sergio's existence. But as a result, Sergio becomes obsessed with the doll, asking it for advice on everything, including how he can look good for his big high school reunion. Lucky Boy suddenly takes the chance to turn evil and tells him to remove his ears, scalp himself, cut off his eyelids, chisel his lips, trim his nose, and remove and reuse other body parts to become tall. As you might imagine, Sergio makes a big impression at the reunion. Again, not a whole lot to say here since it seems so tangential to the character from the games. I'm assuming that this is going to end up being connected to the upcoming Book 9 story, The Puppet Carver, but uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. And just when you thought that this book wasn't going to deliver on any lore reveals, we get to our third story, What We Found, which is quite literally just a retelling of FNAF 3. So tell me if this one starts to sound familiar. A night security guard working at Fazbear Frights, a horror attraction themed around the murders and disappearances appearances happening at the Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria franchise begins suffering from severe hallucinations the day the crew brings in a spring trap suit found hidden in the walls of a different building. Hudson, our night guard, winds up trapped in a pizza oven and gets roasted to death at the end of his shift. It is really sad and also a really obvious parallel to the events of FNAF 3, right? But here's the thing, it also really feels like it's meant to confirm for us that Michael Afton is who we play as in FNAF 3. If you remember back to a couple years ago, I had a theory that Mike Afton is our player character in pretty much every game in the franchise. We see the name Mike on 
FNAF 1's paycheck, we see the name Mike again on the monitor and sister location. In fact, the player's guide for that game, The Freddy Files, practically confirms that part of the theory. So that's Mike appearing in two games, but what about FNAF 2 and 3? The name Mike doesn't appear anywhere in either of them. Well, in FNAF 1, we know that Mike eventually gets fired for tampering with the animatronics and his odor, something that would happen if, you know, he was a rotting corpse walking around from restaurant to restaurant to free the souls of the dead kids trapped in the suits put there by his father. So isn't it a little coincidental that Fritz Smith, our protagonist from FNAF 2, gets fired for the exact same reasons, tampering with the animatronics and odor. It's also why Michael would keep getting attacked. We know from Sister Location that he looks just like his dear old daddy. And lastly, it's why Golden Freddy says it's me every time he appears. It's the brother's soul crying child trapped in the suit recognizing and reaching out to his sibling Mike. But then, what about FNAF 3? When I first presented the theory, I, uh, I thoughtfully omitted FNAF 3. It made sense to me from a narrative angle, but in terms of actual physical evidence, there wasn't a whole lot to point to outside of the hallucinations. Since the phantom animatronic jump scares in FNAF 3 were moments pulled from both FNAF 1 and 2, it implies that the person seeing them must have been present in both those locations. But beyond that, yeah, bupkiss. However, what we found may have just given us our missing piece. Our security guard Hudson in the story has a very tragic existence. His dad took his own life at an early age, and his mother got remarried to an abusive man named Lewis. And this guy is awful. Like, he is real bad. Eventually, we learn that Hudson seems to have burned his house down, killing this violent man in the process, and then repressing those memories. Fast forwarding back to the present day, as he's tormented by Springtrap, he hears his dad's voice coming from the suit. That, along with a former abusive teacher named Mr. Atkin, or Mr. Adkin, depending on which page you're talking about. I'm looking at you, proofreaders. You got some splaining to do. Anyway, Hudson kills his violent father in a fire. A father whose voice comes out of Springtrap along with another person associated with childhood trauma and with a name suspiciously close to Afton. The security guard himself then dies in a fire in a tightly contained pizza oven. To me, it sounds a heck of a lot like the journey of Mike, who would also be responsible for burning his Springtrapped serial killer father to death at the end of FNAF 3 before he himself meets a fiery end in FNAF 6, also trapped inside of a small box. It's potentially the confirmation that I've been waiting on for years. Or not, who knows. Speaking of FNAF 3, here's a small observation that didn't fit anywhere, but I wanted to call out. You know how we're pretty confident that Golden Freddy was possessed by two spirits, Crying Child and Cassidy the Vengeful Spirit? Well, it seems like Scott may have been hinting at that since FNAF 3. I couldn't believe it either, but take a look. Here's a photo of the bad ending from that game. Notice how the mask in the background, Golden Freddy, has two lights on in its eyes instead of just one like all the others? Each light would be representative of a spirit trapped in the suit. Shout out to Game Theorist subreddit user The Real Brofi for that one. And while we're on the subject of Cassidy, theory number two, Cassidy died in the ball pit. Recently, it was confirmed by Scott Cawthon on Reddit that the Fazbear Frights book series will end at number 11. Random number, with the 12th mini book full of stories that didn't make the cut acting as a bonus. Gotta admit, it's a bit of a shame because this whole time I was hoping they would get 76 more out of this thing just so we could make a joke along the lines of, was that the right of 87? Anyway, it means that we're in the end game now, specifically with the story of Detective Larson and the Stitch Wraith, the overarching narrative that happens in the epilogue of each installment. And that's nothing to sneeze at, my friends. Is that idiom acceptable after 2020? Anyway, it's a big deal since this is the story that's historically had the biggest lore reveals, most notably the hints that led us to believe that Golden Freddy had two souls trapped inside of him and instead of just one. And with only three epilogues left before the end of the series, this story needs to have itself a really big payoff. So when we last left our heroes, they had just battled a 15-foot trash rabbit called the Afton Amalgamation. By the end, Larson got infected with the glitch trap virus, and Jake, the remaining spirit inside the Stitch Wraith, realized that he could use his, um, I don't know, his, his remnant powers to basically go into people's memories and make the good ones stronger in order to help them. Quote, maybe he could pull a memory out, a good one, and make it bigger and brighter than the rest. If he could, he could ease the man's pain. It was almost like blowing up a balloon. Only the balloon was a memory and the air was Jake's will. It's, um, it's about on par with the level of insanity you'd expect from FNAF in the year of our lol bit 2021. And well, that's certainly an interesting story detail, what I instead want to focus on is Larson's half of the plot. The detective who's been trying to piece together all the mysteries around Fazbear Entertainment. Getting infected by the Afton virus has had some weird side effects on him. Specifically, it's allowed him to hop 
caught between the memories of a bunch of Afton's victims. Quote, he was getting glimpses of the past. They were memories, but not his own. These images belonged to others from different places and different times. So it feels like this is the literary device that's going to allow the books to explain the missing children's incident. Larson is going to get clues via this memory hopping to either see for himself or get the clues to investigate what happened to Susie, Gabriel, Fritz, Jeremy, Charlie, and Cassidy. But then things start to take an unexpected turn. One final quote. As his mind swept him from one visit to the past to another, he always saw the same thing in between. He saw a ball pit. Oh boy, here we go, friends. Get ready, shark. You bout to be jumped. You see, despite all the craziness of the Fazbear Fright story, they've all roughly held to the same logic. Technology infects humans, endoskeletons become haunted, people can be replicated, but there was one that always stood out. For those of you who don't remember, the title story of the very first book was Into the Pit. The story of a time-traveling ball pit that allowed a boy named Oswald to go back to the past to visit the year 1985 and see the after effects of the missing children's incident. As he does this, he's chased down by Spring Bonnie disguised as his father. It was weird, because time travel is always weird, but you know, we didn't think too much of it at the time because it was a one-off story in a collection of random one-off stories. But now, now my friends, we're coming back to it. Of all the 24 stories that Fazbear Frights has had, this is the one that the big overarching narrative of the series suddenly deems important enough to come back to for some reason. The time travel ball pit. And that's not our only clue that this thing's important. Remember Security Breach, Furry's Rage? More like MatPat's Rage at this point because not only does the game include a dabbing Chica, but it also features a secret boss battle if you complete hard mode. A secret boss battle against this. A slithering reference to FNAF 4's confusing lore. Chica without her beak, the 6am alarm clock face, the FNAF 4 locked box, what appears to be an IV bag in the back there. Basically in this one sprite we have Scott acknowledging that the real final boss of this whole damn series is figuring out what FNAF 4 was trying to tell us. It's also him poking fun at the FNAF 4 dream theory considering the thing's name the source code is Dreamgeist. But of all the stuff that's hidden inside of that head, there's a few random round objects that don't really fit anything from FNAF 4. Are they Easter eggs? Or maybe they're balls from a ball pit. Considering that balls and ball pits have never once been important to this series. And in the level where you fight the Dreamgeist, we see screenshots from previous games. Sister Location's blueprints, a camera feed from FNAF 1, again implying some level of time travel, or spanning across time. Because remember, Dream Theory came out before Sister Location was released, which makes that FNAF 5 blueprint reference really stand out here. Now, by no means am I saying that there's time travel in the games or anything like that, but the sudden re-emergence of the ball pit in Fazbear Frights opens up a few interesting possibilities. One, that Cassidy died in the pit. Remember, the Vengeful Spirit has powers that go beyond all the other spirits, to the extent that it's able to trap Afton in a state between life and death. So if anyone or anything is gonna imbue a ball pit with time powers, Cassidy seems like the one to do it. And we know that someone did die in there because both in the pit and the latest epilogue make a point about the pit's sticky balls. Get your mind out of the gutter there, people. Quote, he studied the plastic balls. The substance covering the plastic surface looked like blood. Old, old blood. And here I thought the worst thing that happened in a ball pit was getting pink eye. Fire up the golden Freddy in the ball pit thumbnail, boys. Two, that the series is gonna end with Larson and the Stitch Wraith using the ball pit to save the missing children from Afton and release their spirits. Why would I assume something like this? Well, giving Larson memory powers would be enough to tell the kid's story. Let him see glimpses of their trauma, clues that lead him on an investigation. The ball pit, though, becomes necessary if the story plans on him physically interacting with those kids. So I wouldn't be surprised if the ending of this entire book series is unwinding the thread that started it all. The missing children's incident kids are saved, which, in the process, undoes all of the other horrific stories that spin out from the Fazbear pizzerias. In the process, Scott retroactively gives all the sad stories from the Fazbear Fright series a happy ending. And finally, number three, Detective Larson becomes Afton in what is a self-perpetuating time loop scenario. Oh, sure. You all laugh. And trust me, I think it's dumber than YouTuber boxing. But hear me out here. We have ourselves a character, Larson, infected by, as the book puts it, Afton's darkness. We also have ourselves a ball pit that allows him to go back in time for some reason that's going to be important to the narrative. So what if Larson winds up going back in time to investigate only for the darkness to take over and turn him into William Afton, setting all the events of the story into motion? Who knows, maybe we truly do exist in the darkest timeline and Scott Cawthon gave the green light to a story that allows Afton to be a creation of his own future self. Tell you what, it would explain how Afton was able to create such futuristic advanced robotics when he was 
literally in the early 80s, because that's something that will never get explained. Like I said, that theory is real dumb, but, you know, it is on the table. I wouldn't put it past this series. Time travel opens up all sorts of dumb decisions, and time loops are real hot right now. And heck, we do see a lot of ball pits in that new trailer, one that comes complete with a day-night mechanic. Huh? Huh? Will I be right? Will I be wrong? We've got ourselves three more books and an indeterminate wait for security breach to arrive, so you can bet the theories are just going to get more and more ridiculous until that day comes. So in the meantime, remember to actually listen to my dear friend's Rhett and Link's new podcast, Ronstadt. If you like FNAF, then chances are you're going to really dig their new project. It's a horror sci-fi comedy about a guy who sounds suspiciously like Rhett from Good Mythical Morning. He becomes a 911 call operator who has a sixth sense that allows him to solve supernatural mysteries while also helping people on the other end of the line. 911, what's your emergency? I'm so scared. There's this thing. And it's after me. Kind of like Ghostbusters meets Doctor Who. And even for me, a picky podcast connoisseur, it's really enjoyable. So check them out. I am super, super proud of the work that they're doing on that series. I want to give it a little bit more love because it's definitely worth your time. It's actually from the same people who make Markiplier's podcasts, which if you haven't listened to those, those are also really good. So just high quality audio content right into your ear holes across the board. Anyway, I dropped a link for them down in the description below. Go check it out, especially if you're in the mood for something that's still a bit FNAFy, but a little less jump scare intensive. And always remember, it's all just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.